Hi everyone. Um, this video, over the years um, since I've lived here, which is now 11 years and it's flown over, gone, in no, gone over in no time, um, I've collected up various pieces of wood, really nice pieces of wood, which I've kept um, until either they're dry or I've, I've been in the mood to, to, uh, to turn them. This piece, I've got a really nice piece of, of maple burl. Um, I've got it mounted on a, on a faceplate ring. It's about 18 inches diameter and approximately 5 inches thick. I've got it mounted on a faceplate ring. I like them, there's a dovetail on them. And if I don't get around to finishing the piece or I want to take it off and do something else, it's easy to remount. You'll get it back in exactly the same place. So those are very useful if you, uh, if you mount a piece and don't necessarily get around to finish turning it. It'll go back on in exactly the same place. Um, You'll notice I've got it mounted with the burl on the outside. A lot of guys have turned these and they turn them natural etched. Fair enough, no, no problem with it uh, whatsoever. I've done them myself. However, with this piece, the grain's really nice. I want to make it into something utilitarian and um, just beautiful to, beautiful to look at. Really nice, smooth curves. Um, if I can avoid having any of the burr in whatsoever, I don't mind a little bit on the outside, if there was any, within the shape itself. However, um, on the rim, I want it to be smooth, I want it to be ergonomic. If it was a natural edge and all this edge was spiky, it wouldn't be very ergonomic. Yes, maybe pretty to look at, um, but I want this piece to be totally beautiful and so I'm going to turn all this away. Um, again, it's just a different design of, of this piece. So. I've got it mounted up, it's on a face plate, it's uneven, it's unbalanced. So what I want to do initially is I'm going to use a draw cut, I'm going to use the tip of the tool, and I'm going to take this corner off. That there mainly, maybe might cut into that a little bit um, and take that corner off. That's going to really make a difference from a balance point of view. Um, as I said earlier, it's unbalanced, I won't be able to turn it that fast in the first place. So by trying to take out some of that wood first, we're going to do that. Then I'm going to throw it up so I know exactly the diameter I've got left to work with. After that, we're going to take this away. I've got to go down, right down to the bottom of that, which is going to be, what, roughly an inch and a half, to get to a flat surface, which I can then put the foot on. Um, and then once I've got the foot, I've got the reference of the foot, where the foot's going to be, I've got the diameter, and they've got two points of reference as to, to, to form the curve that I want. Um, the foot's going to be slightly lifted. I want, a, I want a slight lifting curve, then a kind of return curve, just a simple curve. It's going to have a wider rim, which is going to be undercut. So it's going to be slightly thicker at the top than it will be at the base, but they work really, really well. Really well indeed. So, uh, I've got all my tools sharpened. Just get my safety glasses and uh, switch it on, and I'll explain to you what I'm doing uh, as I'm doing it, okay? And just uh, reiterate and... and um, compound what I'm, what I'm going to show you. Okay, so I'll see you in a couple of minutes and uh, we'll start it. Okay, so already go, let's switch it on. Um, I'm going to turn it slow, turn it up to the speed that I want. It's unbalanced. Um, even on this one, people know that I generally like to turn fast, but there's a time and a place. On this one, I'll turn it to a speed that I feel comfortable. Um, so I'm going to switch it on, ease up the speed, I've set the tool rest so I know roughly kind of where I'm going to start the cut and what are we up to? Two, three hundred. Now remember, on a bigger piece, the peripheral speed is faster. Not necessarily the, the, you know, what the readout is. That's the uh, spindle speed. So it's a faster speed anyway. So just take the time. Tip of the tool. There we go. Just kind of ease that across, going in a little bit of the time kicking a little bit because it's cutting and missing, cutting and missing. Try and press down on the tool a little bit more firmly than you normally would to try and stop the tool from, from kicking too much. Just stop that, I just want to see where I'm cutting, see if it's in the place that I want. Yeah, right on that corner. I'm going to start to take that corner as well. I'm going to drop the tool rest a touch, it's cutting slightly high. What I want is the tool rest below the centre line and the tool itself cutting right on the centre line, oops, which is about there. Okay, that's fine. And put the tool on the tool rest, that's not going to cut. Switch the lathe on, move the tool rest away and then just ease it into the cut. Just take your time, there's no hurry on this. I'm not 
trying to feed the tool through too quickly, just taking my time and feeling for those clips. This is bone dry as well. drawn towards me, um, generally in the direction of the grain. That's the bit that's really going to be hard when I get into that knot there and that area. Um, however, at the moment, it's fine. Just taking a little bit of time. Cutting and missing, cutting and missing. That's why it's, it's want to kick slightly. I'm going to see if I can ease the speed up just a little bit faster. It's only on 300, 400, 450. Just that and that has made a big difference. So what I'm going to do now is move the two rest around to here, swing it round, just to make sure nothing, <coughs> pardon me, nothing's going to catch. I'm going to do a push cut. Of course, here, let's just move that right to there. There we go. So what I'm going to do is close the flute, pick the cut up, then open the flute to about 130 and then lean through. I'm not gonna use my arms like this. My tool's held in three places, there, there on the handle, and it's uh, the handle's into my hip. Lean forwards, you've got far more control doing that. So, let's just switch this on, pick the cut up. This is a push cut. Just to ease it off the piece. Let's stop that and have a look. I always like to stop it and look just to assess what's happening. Unbelievable grain in that. On this, the grain's running all kind of directions. So um, I'll, it, it, there's various techniques we can use to get the finish on the piece. I'll come to that later. So a few more cuts. I'm missing out there, missing there. You can see the lines from the, the band saw. There we go. There in that section. So another couple of cuts. taken out about an eighth of an inch there. You can hear there's a totally different sound, there's a more continuous cut. Therefore, that shows me, and if I look at the profile, profile, that shows me, and I can hear and feel that the piece is flat. Just let's pick that cut up again. When you get to the natural edge part of this cut, hold down on the tool a little bit more firmly. Again, you're going to be cutting and missing, and therefore it's going to want to kick the, kick the tool away. Okay, we'll stop that. The speed. Did make a di big difference. Okay, to be honest, it's only that section there around the rim that I need to be totally flat. That bit isn't flat. You can see the lines from the bandsaw. However, all that's going to be removed. So to be honest, it's only that first inch that I'm concerned about um, because the curve's going to come right up to this, this edge here. So I've got it to a stage that I want around there. We're now going to start to... Um, so I'm going to move the two rest here and start doing a draw cut across here, taking off all those little high points till I get down to the level that I want. This is going to be a shallowish bowl. Um, 
the piece of wood and the thickness, I can see the shape that I want to get in my head. I can see it. All I've got to do is make the cuts to get to that shape. Again, some people find that difficult with experience um, and also looking at the profile as you're making the cuts. That becomes easier because you're still watching what you're doing when you're doing it. That's one of the reasons I like the draw cut. Um, to certainly from a shaping point of view, I'll use both cuts, the draw cut and the push cut, depending on the wood. Um, but I do prefer the draw cut, with the tool in the right position, you can actually see what you're doing. When you're doing a push cut, you're not standing to, the, to see the profile. You're looking at the face of the piece, and it's very difficult to, to actually to get exactly the shape you want. It's, the push cut's a brilliant finishing cut. It does a great job. Um, however, for profiling, I think the draw cut just makes more sense. So, we're going to move the two rest around here. Um, give me a minute. And then uh, we're going to face this off and get down to the level I want. I'm going to have to take off at least an inch, inch and a half, to get what I want. Um, so, see you in just a minute. Okay, so I'm set up. That's the highest point. Maybe there as well. Uh, there's not quite so much wood there. There's a little bit more wood here. So I'm going to start. It's easy to see that as it's spinning. I'm going to start here and start taking that high point down and then just work the tool across until I get to the level I want. Uh, notice where I've got the tool rest set. It's more from the center here. So I've got something to rest on when my hand gets to that position. If the tool rest was further over, your hand would be dropping off the edge. You're never cutting that side of the, of the piece. So we can have more of the tool rest here. That allows me to do that, that nice draw cut. Okay, so. I'm going right the way across. I don't want to stop so far and then come way across and I've got a high piece there which catches the wing and, and flicks the tool or you know gives you a shock. Again just using the very tip of the tool. I'm not like that using the wing. That's a big cut. I might as well use a scraper if I turn it down. Tip of the tool, trying to cut the wood. The heavier cut, and the heavier cut I'm taking, it's want to kick the tool away more. Okay, so I'm going to try and ease the speed up a fraction from 450 to 550, another 100 RPM. Just that has given me a slightly cleaner cut. Let's get this bit in. Now I've got several tools sharpened up. So I'm just going to pick another one. How sharper that was. I'm just going to stop this. Let that slow down. So where I'm cutting on that section, that's the real hard section. That's almost like a, a branch was coming out there, and, and we've got the end grain. That's real hard. You can see where I've got to go down to. Um, so again, I'm just going to move. I stop the lathe to move the tool rest. The first tool I was using, the, the edge got hammered, the cut and the miss, and this is bone dry. So again, a, a, a new sharpened tool makes a massive difference. Excellent. 
it's all starting to work. There's some amazing grain in this, absolutely amazing. I've had this piece of wood for about nine years and it's been out here in Vegas, so it's, it's absolutely bone dry. Uh, this is the hard work, getting to the, the stage you want to be, the cutting and missing, you hold on to the tool. It's quite, uh, it's quite strenuous. Right, ease that up. Okay, 650. Not much further to go. Now, if I take into account, I'm going to put a recess on this, it's going to have a wider foot, a slight lift, then a curve into the rim. That is just over a quarter of an inch. The depth of the recess that I want is going to be around about 3 sixteenths, a quarter of an inch. So, another couple of cuts down here so that I can get a solid foot there to get rid of this. The recess is going to be there roughly, the foot, okay so a few more cuts, I can't take that, I, if, if, if this was flat here, out to here, I would maybe start con considering the recess there and include that little hollow as part of the recess. Um, but in good words, so a few more cuts, I'm not concerned about any of this tear out, once I get this thing balanced and, and start to get into the shape, I will be able to turn the speed up a little faster. Um, again, however, consider that peripheral speed, that is still fast, that's still a big chunk of wood. Just be, uh, be careful and be safe. So. This Laguna lathe, um, it's the uh, 2436, you can see what it's handling, it's an excellent, for, for value for money, um, it's an excellent buy. I mean, don't get me wrong, some lovely lathes on the market, but uh, you don't have to spend a great deal of money to get something decent. Compared to what we were using 30 years ago, this, this would be the Rolls Royce, it's absolutely amazing, for the money, again. So, we're getting into that. Recess is about there, foot's going to be about there, another couple of cuts, I might as well get rid of it, then I know it's gone, I'll have enough room to uh, mark out where the foot is, so a uh, couple more cuts, 
Now I'll stop it and show you what I'm actually go going to do to mark it out for the foot, okay? Then we'll start getting into some shape. That's going to be absolutely gorgeous. Tell you what, I'm just going to change over tools again. Uh, those two tools were half inch, this is a 5 eighths. Nice sharp tool, what a difference. I'm using the same part of the tool, so I can make a, a draw cut and then I can push it away from me. From there, come back across. Right. <clears throat> okay, that should work fine.